by the middle 60s, 65, 66, I guess there was a growing sense in the community that uh, this war was uh, not the same as the ones that we had fought before. Um, uh, a growing sense that uh, that our reason for being there was not uh, so solidly established, uh, that our goals were fuzzy, uh, that there really maybe wasn't a, a purpose in, in fighting that action, or at least uh, something that we could accomplish that would be good. And it uh, more or less uh, divided the community, uh, pro and con, and uh, uh, our little society structure becomes uh, split and things start to unravel. Um, I guess the uh, the thing that happened here uh, ha happened nationwide. Uh, we were just uh, a little slice of of the nation, and and uh, it was the television reports that we were getting that were making the difference in our thinking. This is a letter from Fred Burcham, who was a serviceman. Uh, World War II veteran, uh, a patriot, uh, and he wrote a lengthy letter from uh, his viewpoint, uh, which uh, we published in late 1966, and he writes here, uh, knowing the communist form of government and the individual has no rights that cannot be taken away from a person, even life itself. I cannot understand what people hope to gain by avoiding the draft, preaching withdrawal at any place that communists won't take over. In other words, shut our, hour, shut our eyes or look the other way and it will all go away. How can one avoid this? The answer is you cannot and expect to enjoy the freedom that we have today. One thing about freedom, it is not free. Every generation had to fight for it, and there is no exception today. I only wish there were, there were, because no one likes to send their sons and their loved ones to a war. So let us do our part when we are called upon. You and I are no better than those who have done so before us. Many thousands have laid down their lives for us, now is the time for us to do the same thing that others have done, so we might enjoy this freedom. That is what we are fighting for today in Vietnam, freedom. Now here's a response to that letter uh, a week later, uh, written by Reverend Anthony Blankers, a minister here. Uh, and he writes uh, in part here, uh, I am entirely aware that anyone who has the courage to use the freedom of expression guaranteed by our Constitution to oppose a program advocated by the military-minded people of our country is in imminent danger of being branded a communist. How many people are silent today out of fear when the freedom of our nation depends on the free expression of their candid and considered opinions? In all of the wars ever fought, did they not finally have to be settled around a conference table? Could it not be possible that there is a better way to settle international disputes than the way of bombs and napalm making flaming torches out of human beings, and war making thousands of innocent humans destitute and homeless? I think that illustrates uh, what was going on in Greenfield in our area at that time. Uh, a split of opinion. Uh, questions raised by some, uh, uh, staunch defense of the country's policy by others, uh, and uh, to some of us who could see both sides, it uh, seemed like the whole uh, thing was unraveling in front of us. I suppose uh, the, the divisiveness, the, uh, the split, uh, the healing process uh, began uh, in the early 70s. Um, 
we uh, we saw an end finally to that war, and uh, uh, and I think uh, maybe a, a realization by some of the counterculture that uh, <laughs> that theirs was not a lifestyle that could continue forever. I'm sure there are individuals that still maintain it, but. Uh, um, I hope I'm right anyway, a realization that those old values that, uh, that we had before all of this uh, period uh, were still valid, that we still expected uh, honesty, that we still expected our people to work hard, that uh, really the, the basis of uh, society in America is a family and uh, there's no better way to raise children than in a family. Um, we're still uh, seeing the legacy of that decade in, um, in America today, and we're fighting problems that began there and we haven't found solutions to yet. Uh, split families, uh, we're looking at uh, problems that uh, I think began in the 60s with the drug uh, culture. Um, I'm just certain that that uh, decade of the 60s gave rise to the idea that uh, uh, drug use was smart, it was uh, chic, it was the thing to do. Um, the music of that period uh, made no bones about uh, hyping drug use as uh, something that was desirable and it infected a whole generation of people with that idea. Now uh, we look at <laughs> what it's doing to the country and, and to uh, many individuals, and we're appalled by it. Uh, and there's been a turn away from that, I think, by thinking people, uh, but we've still got the debt to pay from that whole thing. <laughs>